Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope you're doing well. I want to do something a little bit different today. I know that when I do a video, sometimes um, questions from people who are newer to me and don't know some of the other things I've said or whatnot, they're like, well, why would you do this? Or why would you say that? What has that person ever done to you? Well, generally I can tell you. I want to talk tonight about why I have questions for Blowhorn Betty. Now, she goes by many, many names, um, but I will do my best to call her Blowhorn Betty. But as you all know that I have COVID brain syndrome, I have long haul COVID, and um, apparently a little bit of Tourette's or something. So um, I had meningitis from the first time I had COVID. So um, my brain was really, really not doing well, and it still hurts, and it like jams up when I'm trying to talk. You guys are probably sitting there on the other end listening to me going, kickstart, kickstart. So if you ever have to speed me up, totally understand, get it. Um, somebody needs to just kind of whack me around here, just restart, like restart me where I, where I stop. So anyway, um, if I call her something other than Blowhorn Betty, I'm going to do my best, but I'm not I'm not guaranteeing anything. Um, I, I can't fully apologize because I, I don't feel great about Betty. I, I have questions. And, um, when I've tried to ask questions in the past, um, I got my channel stricken down once. And so I'm going to do it in this way. I'm going to do an open letter towards Betty and everybody can see. And if they have the same questions, maybe they'll get answers too. So it'll just be a wonderful experience for us all around. Now, first thing that's going to happen is she's going to try to take away this video, but I'm going to do this under fair use, and I'm going to put this here, but I'm going to say this straight up. I'm going to say that I'm going to do this under the fair use in Title 17 USC, a squiggly line thing, 512F provides penalties for the deliberate misrepresentation of copyright infringement. The owner, author of this video, believes in good faith that it constitutes fair use per 17 U.S.C. squiggly line 107. Persons, agencies, filing a false or frivolous DMCA complaint may be subject to civil liability. I say squiggly line because I can't remember at the moment what that thing is called. You guys are all probably like yelling it out there and I'm like, try my best to hear. You know what? I can't quite hear into the future. I don't have this video up yet. So, with that being said, without further ado, let me show ya. Here we go. So, long ago and far away, I started my channel. Now, we know that I had one channel before that was directed directly at a animal abusing, people abusing, narcissistic scammer from hell. No, not this one. My other channel, I mean. Wink, wink. Um, and it was just, so that I didn't have to write out. We, we were all on this thing called Gossip Bakery. I don't know if that still is a thing. I haven't checked in a while, but it's a, it's a forum where people talk about YouTube characters. Because they are all characters, you know? We all like to people watch. Oh. When I started my channel on my own, where I wanted to go from uh, just really watching this one person to being more broad as a creator, I had watched enough to know that I needed to wait until my youngest children were over the age of 18. Because when you speak the truth against somebody like the person who I'm saying, allegedly. The first thing they'll go for is your children. They'll call CPS and make false accusations against you. The second thing they'll do is that they'll say, okay, we're going to need to bring up some information and they're going to act like they're God. Like you've just passed through those pearly gates and you're going to have everything you've ever done read about you. Because to speak the truth or ask a question of, one of these people who may or may not be the person who I'm talking about right now 
they do this. They expose you. It's called doxing. Then they want to get real wild, which they do. They'll call the police and they'll say something um, very, very outrageous in an effort to have your home swatted. The person who I'm covering is within a group and her friend has admitted to this practice of doxing to then cause those types of things to happen. So, Betty, my kids are over 18. I don't currently work. I got laid off at the beginning of the pandemic, so can't go for my job. And I have no convictions. I think that it actually says so nicely on my thing that it's like I have no public record. (laughs) So it's one of those things where you're not going to be able to find shit about me that I don't care about. Okay. So you're going to go, I'm going to say this, you're going to say all the stuff that you usually do. And you're going to start going on your channel and be like, (laughs) yeah, we're going to have to start looking into this. We're going to have to. And I just want to know who is we? Who is we? Who, who is the we that looks up and has to go into looking into who's asking you these questions? Okay? I am following the terms of service per YouTube that say to be anonymous, to guard your identity. Therefore, I do. And I am. Now, in my effort to help you, when I saw your extensions that were a different color, I put up the picture of my extensions. Um... Wouldn't recommend them. They were tape in. My head felt like a big massive mop. Uh, yeah, I looked like a mermaid. Wonderful for a couple of days. Wouldn't recommend it. Really tough when they come back out. But I just wanted to show you that the, the goal is to kind of have a color of hair that it shows up different than your skin and all one color for the extension. So I've been trying to help you in this whole thing, you know, as, as we're all interrelated in this community. Although I don't a spouse from one of the YouTube community communities or another. I'm a lone ranger in that. So I am speaking for myself. I'm not speaking with anybody else. I'm not asking anybody to co-sign for my opinions. This is exactly what I want to say from my viewpoint as a creator. When I came onto the scene, like I said, seeing that these are the things that are done, I made sure of it, but the reason why I was seeing it is because I was subscribed to you, Betty. I was subscribed to the guy that you used his soap, which is so gross. Let me just tell you, it was gross. Um, That whatever his name is and everybody, I was just like, oh, they look like a nice person to listen to. Bing, 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 bing. And I was like, why not? But some of the things didn't pan out very well. And soon I started unsubscribing from the creators who I didn't want to align myself with. I wanted to learn from creators. And at first I would see that creators would have these big subscriber counts and making all this money. And so I would think, okay, they're doing something right. How can I do that to be successful? I soon learned that those that were getting all of that money and all of the subs weren't always as truthful as I like to be. As I like to be truthful, I reached 1,000 subscribers in March. So after almost one year, I hit my 1,000 mark and I was monetized and I just finally got rid of or got rid of, got all of the paperwork turned in and everything. And so um, I've been at my channel for a little more than a year. And I've not yet hit the threshold yet. You have to hit $100 for them to be able to send your first check. I'm sitting there at $86.90. So I see you getting so much money that you can travel around to go to these cases. And I've only made $86.90 for the entire year of my work and I've not gone anywhere. I've done all of my research from the computer because I don't want to ask for anybody else's money and then go do something that they didn't like that they think I'm doing 
it would be weird to me. So I would like to see if I can see that you earning all of that money or taking all of that money, however it is, however you have all of that money that's coming in, I would like to see if the information that you glean is worth that much money that you're taking from people or if the same amount of information can be acquired by sitting at home and doing the research and the same amount of awareness can be brought to the cases. So I unsubscribed during the Leilani Simpson, Simon thing. I spoke out when I thought that it was unfair that you were trying to get people into fights so that you can get their information. You repeatedly said, oh yeah, that's an assault. That's an assault. Get an officer here. Get an officer here. Get their information. We're going to find out who they are and then we're going to find out everything about them and their families too. That offended me greatly because I thought that you were wasting the resources of an already stressed police department as they were trying to find the baby who had been put in the landfill. So to me, it was not respectable for you as a creator to try to put more of a burden on that police department. And I watched you sit there and eat and require people to give you money to eat and require people to make sure that when food is sent, that they sent down to you to make sure that it's hot because you like your food hot. I've never imagined being so rude as to command the temperature of food that somebody was given as a gift and it was really bothersome. And then when the ambulance needed to come down and it turned out the ambulance was getting the person who had to call 911 because the house that they had lived in all of their life, they wanted to die in as well but they weren't able to find peace and quiet because of all of the noise that you were making on your blow horn, bull horn. I don't know what it is, but it's loud. And I don't know what you've ever accomplished by putting your mouth around anything, but who am I to ask such questions? Nonetheless, the person needed to be transported to a place where they could peacefully die. I thought that was disgusting, and I said as much. And I watched you and the people who you say that are associated with you for this group that you claim is heels on the ground. I watched you all sitting there on your phones talking about how this person needs to be checked, this person needs to be checked, this person needs to be checked. And I didn't understand what the checking was, but now that I understand that the way that it was then allegedly, is that it took three different people from three different accounts to take down one person's channel. So while I was watching and I said, hey, that's bull or bullhorn Betty, that you're making somebody else have to go somewhere to die, I soon didn't have a channel. I had never done anything to break any rule or anything. It came without warning. My channel termination was scary. It was traumatic. I cried. I had put so much work into my channel at that point. I think I was almost at 500 subscribers. So I'd been doing content and following all of the rules. So to have my channel revoked um, for multiple complaints of whatever, it was just really really traumatic and it said I couldn't go on another channel. I couldn't do anything. There was nothing to, to contest it. It was done. Goodbye. You're no longer part of YouTube. And I thought it was ridiculous because I was watching what you guys were doing and getting all of the money and all of the food and everything. And I thought that there should be something better in our world than to accept what you're doing and to silence me for barely daring to ask why you're doing the things you do. A couple of my friends told me that there were several other channels down. As we have now 
been able to talk, we realized that the common denominator was that we were all commenting on the ridiculous behavior that you were exemplifying in the neighborhood in Georgia and wasting all of the resources. What did you do? What difference did you make? You're sitting there harassing the police department that's out there in the heat with their whole law enforcement crew out there digging through garbage all day long. They made grids and they sat there and they went square by square. They came home smelling like hot ass garbage to their families. And who knows how the person feels that found that baby. That's what real law enforcement was doing. That's what the real judicial system had in place. What did you accomplish by going and sitting your fat ass outside and being loud and disrupting a neighborhood, a community, and filing false charges on people? Why? How am I supposed to see as a younger creator that what you're doing is better? How did you feel striking my channel down? How did you see me as only having 500 as being so inferior to you that what you were doing was better? Ultimately, I got my channel back, as you can see. I'm probably insignificant to you and you don't realize all of the channels that you've affected by the things that you do. But I remember, and others do too. The reason why I unsubscribed was because you continually had headlines that don't match the topic. You have a headline and then you don't expound and you don't address and you don't give the details. You don't mention who you're talking about. You don't use names, details, site sources. You do nothing of that. That is what a journalist does. I've heard your sister is a journalist. Maybe ask her how to do it. So if you go over to your channel... And you say that you're a victim's rights activist, advocate, and social media influencer. We cover cases. Who is we? Please tell me. Who is we? You and the turd in your pocket? I mean, yeah, it's an old dad joke, but who is we? Why do you do that when you're standing there by yourself saying we? I don't know who we is. Ooh. You have 24... Point five subscribers. I have a fraction of that. I have 1,500. I want to know why you have 23,000 more subscribers than me. I want to know what I'm doing wrong. I want to look at this and see. Because if I were to ask you a question in your stream, you would call me names Call me this, blah, 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 blah. Okay, so you joined May 13th, 2021. You just had an anniversary of terrorizing people. So let's see here. So yeah, you just had an anniversary there, didn't you? You've been confusing people since May 13th, 2021. Okay, well, maybe that's my problem. Maybe your channel is one year older than mine and I will understand everything and be where you are then. Maybe so. Maybe that's why. You have 4,432,401 views. That's amazing. Now, it says here that you are a victim's rights advocate, advocate activist. What is a victim rights act? activist is that the blowhorn thing i don't know oh and social social media influencer what do you influence i'm asking i don't know and then again you say we cover cases and help in the search of those missing 
and or presumed dead. Who is we? What cases have you helped in that has led to anything good? And do you always ignore what law enforcement asks you to do? There's a reason I'm asking that. You say, we fly all over the country to help find answers for the families and our audience. Who is we? Who did you go with this time? Who is we? Who are you going with? Who is your team? What do the funds, because you ask right here, right here, you start by pimping. It says, please consider supporting this channel, okay? And then it says, please review our past cases. Gabby Petito, Brian Laundry. Okay. Um, what did you do in either? I know that you refer to it a lot and you refer to that without social media, that case wouldn't have been um, solved. Eh, I, I might be able to say that's a half truth. Um, the family that passed by, they could have seen signs in the area that said, we are looking for this van. So we can't say, we don't know how it would have been, okay? But they certainly as hell did not go back through their footage, not tell law enforcement, go back and go on their own little Scooby-Doo trip going and trying to find it. They did the right thing. They found something that looked like it could be something and they called law enforcement to deal with it. They did not go and solicit money to go back and look or solicit money of any kind. They did what they did because that's what we do as part of a community, as citizens of cities, of, of a civilized world in general. You do the right thing. You shouldn't have to be paid to do the right thing. You say, Kylan Schulte and Crystal Turner. Okay, I've not seen you do anything with Kylan and Crystal that is not of the most basic um, information when I'm not going to touch it. Colin Knapp, Rusakala, Summer Wells. Okay, I saw you go and harass Summer Wells is father at his job site which was his way to earn money he earns it because he has a trade and so he earns money how is you going and taking away his ability to earn money better than you begging for money and then not doing what you say you're going to do with that money I don't know what happened to Summer Wells. I don't know that we will ever know. But I don't believe that it is appropriate to go and continue to take jobs from people who are trying to earn money when you yourself are a person who takes money that you didn't earn and you are not being a good steward of that money donated. Paola Miranda Rose, Anthony Tott, Trayvon Martin, and George Zimmerman. You're in Florida. Maybe you did something there. I don't know. Maybe that's that's how the Pulse nightclub and many many more. I I don't think of these cases and think of you as giving any information that is not very very basic and rudimentary. You give the most basic of information and it's not always accurate. And then you say, we work hard and put our live on the line. So who is we and what live are you putting on what line? 
we work hard and put our life on the line to find the answer. What? Then the next thing with a comma says, bring the truth and seek justice like no other channel you will find. Um, really? Are you trying to say that you're putting your life on the line? Or are you trying to say that whoever the we is? Does this we go around and risk its life somewhere? And what answers has it found? What truth have you brought? What justice have you sought? And how can you say that you are set apart from all other channels? That there's no better than yours from your work. I would really like to know. And if, you know, if I'm missing it, please, you know, please let me know what I'm missing. And I can't find these answers. Then we go back to more pimping. It says to donate or support, please fund Venmo, Bullhorn Betty, Cash App, Star Baby. Or PayPal me, Bullhorn Betty. What funny funding. In two years and one week, two, I'm sorry, two years and four days, all of the money that you have made, can you put down, can you put out all of the money that you've made from PayPal? your star baby through cash app um, and your Venmo. Can you put all of the money that you've made through YouTube, PayPal, cash app, and Venmo. Can you put that down and say that you have done this much for this and you break it down and you're making how much per hour to do this. I know that you require $50 per meal. Make sure it's hot. I would never do that on somebody else's dime. I, anyway. Anyway. Like I said, I'm at $86 for my year's work. Total. Cumulative. <coughs> I don't know that at this rate I'll ever even get that because you have to hit the $100 threshold. Oh, well, God knows what it'll take me to make the other 14 How do you do it, Betty? What can you tell me to do better? As a, as a creator who's been around for a year longer and you make so much money that you can go all over the country to the Trump rallies, as you said. I mean, you said that you... Well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. You said that you do this for that and you had everybody believing that you were going to Idaho. But you didn't go to Idaho. You came to Minnesota. Now, I am not a smart girl when it comes to geography, but because I've lived in both of those areas, I can tell you they're kind of far apart. You want to put me on the I-90, I might have to go up a little bit. Now, I can find home. But right now, in Minnesota, I'm not home. And I don't know what tornadoes you were caught up in, but we'll talk about that. But the money you raised... You said you were going back up to Idaho, so I thought you were going to go to another Brian Koberger thing because you kept saying you were doing that. And if you're bringing all this awareness to all of the, these crimes and, and these victims and everything, why are you bragging about keeping your location concealed? If you are truly trying to bring awareness to the missing, like Madeline Kingsbury, shouldn't you be saying every other word out of your mouth that you're going there so that you can find out information? Or then would people have told you that, you know what, law enforcement doesn't want people coming out. That anything and everything you could ever need to find is absolutely and entirely online, especially in that case. But it doesn't matter, does it? Because that's not what it was about. In fact, I made a little, a little short just so that, because some people may not be able to keep up with what you're doing. So I made it easy for them 
because you were interviewed and I because you it said in your thing you were even interviewed so here it was it was it was uh kind of funny we'll go right to it on my channel I have a short and let's see here And that what? actually supports my adventures here, too, because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast. supports my adventures here, too, because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast that supports my adventures here, too, because we've been to a lot of them. So here's my thing, not anywhere here on your description of your page where you get money from PayPal, Cash App, Venmo, and YouTube itself, probably knowing you, you probably take straight donations from those cute little old ladies. They'll just send you straight, put the little stamp on the envelope because there's nothing here that says that the money supporting the channel goes to fund you going to Trump rallies. It doesn't say anything about that. It doesn't matter if that's what you're doing. If that's what you're doing, why not be straightforward about it? Why not say, hey, you know, I, I love to talk about true crime. I, it's my, my passion. I just like to sit there and talk about it. And if you like to hear me talk about it, why don't you give me money? Why don't you give me a lot of money so that I can fly around and go to the Trump rallies? Because that's what I really like to do. So what? If that's what you're doing and it's what you really like to do, what is the harm in being honest? Could it be that if you were honest, you would not be getting the money? Could it be that if the people that give you money knew that they're just giving you money to go on your own vacations to go to Trump rallies, they wouldn't give you the money. I'm sure that a lot of them would. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong or right with Trump or going to the rallies. But your behavior at the rallies is bothersome. I'm not going to talk about that right now, but I've seen it. How dare you try to blame people who've never touched you for assault than somebody who wants to not even say that they uh, know who you are and they're not associated with you to say that they were a witness to that assault doing what you did in Georgia trying to fake assault so that you can get information about people who are on the other side so then you think you can play God again and read off everything they've ever done in their life and let everybody know their address and everything and send a SWAT team and try and get their kids taken away and waste more resources is that what you're doing with your little hooves on the ground crew sorry my COVID brain gets... I wasn't going to talk about it, but you know how I get. So, anywho, looking at your channel, okay? One can come over here and say, all right, oh, you got a wish list and a merch store and all that. Isn't that wonderful? Wish list. Okay, how do you make a wish list? I would love to know how to make one. Is this part of what you get when you are a YouTuber? Hmm. Interesting. Books? You want people to buy you books? The language of letting go. Oh, that's right. You've been citing that. A tent and some socks? Oh, you know what was so weird? Is that when you were in front of our biggest tragedy in the Pacific Northwest... Four amazing kids with their lives in front of them who brutally murdered. And the energy around there was nothing but pain. And you stood there with your selfish, greedy ass talking about how cold your hands were and that you needed somebody to send money to buy you some mittens and gloves. What the hell do you think you are? But anyway, I won't. What is that? What do you think you're doing? Why do you need all this shit? 
I, do I need this to be a YouTuber? Is this part of what I need? A twenty, a, a twenty five dollar gift certificate. What do I need a three thousand seven hundred forty eight dollar camera for? <gasps> what do I need this for? You know what? You are right. I'm wrong. You see, after my phone wouldn't work for my videos anymore, I didn't know what I was gonna do. So I had to say to the hubs, I need a laptop. I can't do what I do anymore for my phone. I'm hoping that it'll pay off, but I can't guarantee that it will. But maybe I'll make enough once that I can pay back what I'm taking from our family's budget. I really need a laptop. So we found the best we could for our budget and it's worked great, but it needs more memory now because of the videos and stuff. Um, but I paid for it and then I paid for my own microphone. It's, um, it's called a blue snowball. You can get them from target. Not very much. That would be the only thing that you would need on this from list. You, anyway, uh, if you had a microphone, you would not have the problems that you do when you're bitching about all of the laptops that don't work it seriously go into target or walmart wherever it is you go ask them for a blue snowball mic Microphone. They're going to be in the locked up area of electronics. Um, go towards the back. Don't be starting a fight with anybody at the front because they're not going to know what you're talking about. Go to the area of electronics and find it. it. I think that they had them around 70 bucks at Christmas. So I did the laptop uh, and the microphone. So I put in and then all of my money that I put in getting discovery documents and the money for the subscription services for that, everything. I put in about $4,000 of my own, my family's money that we really don't have into this channel. And like I say, I'm almost almost there with that first hundred bucks after a year. I've got to figure out what you do. So if we figure out how much money you've made with all of that, and then we figure in all of these gifts that people are buying you, how much money and what what are you how do i do this betty as a creator of your stature what am i doing wrong what am i doing wrong betty how'd you do this do i need to go around to nursing homes and and set them all up with laptops and the cash app tell them to push this button and give to me what in the name of god do you need these boots for? What? Do you need this? What is this? What do you need another printer for? Oh, Lord, for the binder people. Because if anybody dares to do what I'm doing, like I say, folks, enjoy this channel. She's going to strike it down. It'll take me a while to get back on. So I know you all hate my voice, so it'll be okay. You go a little while without it because I'm asking the questions. What is this? Lawmate covert video necklace camera? What in the sh What? You think you're going to go around recording people? Why don't you just get a little body cam like the real cops wear? What is all of this on top of it? This, oh, sublimation printer starter kit with inks, mugs, Sublimation paper, tape, bank, blanks, designs, and access to exclusive content so you can make your own Betty merchandise? Is that what you're doing? Or does the wee person do it? What are these? For law enforcement. Are you in law enforcement? Oh my God. What are you doing? What is this? No, I told you, you just needed a little $70 one. No, no, I don't even know what that all is. Don't do all that. No, when you get the, you have to open the box, Betty. And then you open up the snowball mic and it has, it comes with a cord and you just stick it in the side of your laptop. And you're fine. You're not going to need anything else. Now, Sharpies, oh, I'll, I'm a Sharpie girl. I love me some Sharpies. But you know what? 
I do the thin ones, um, the S gel ones, because I just write, I don't mark up things. What are you marking up? More boots? What are you doing? What kind of boots are these? Band? Rocky men's love? What? Why do you need this? What are you doing? What the fuck? What? Oh my, oh my, are you trying to Coburg through somebody? What are you doing? Why do you need that? No, no. You don't need to do research. Oh, my God. What the heck? You need a drone? Oh, do I need all of these things to be a YouTube creator? Is that why I'm not making the money? What in the world are you asking for all of this for? Have you no shame? <gasps> what is this? Waterproof action camera? Shit. You know, you can do everything with your phone. I, you know, I got the newest uh, one when it came out. It had my old uh, Galaxy for, I think, four or five years. So, um, let's get out of this. This is just terrifying. Um, so, I got the new one when it came out. And it does a lot. You can actually do PowerPoints on these phones, they say. So you just need a good cell phone, a laptop, and a snowball. Like I say, I am in everything I've invested in, 4000 I can't put one more money, one more penny in without making some money because I'm telling you. So between every gift that you've got, your PayPal, your Cash App, and your Venmo, and that, how much money have you made since May 2021 you've been at this for two years how much money have you made in all of those donations and that and what have you done I, I would really just like to know as this younger creator not understanding how you're so successful and I'm not so let me check out your videos and see what you're doing that I'm not okay oh lord um I like your graphics here I don't know how you do those I don't know how to do those. That's real nice. Um, I don't know that I ever be that confident. Uh, I just, I don't. You're confident. Um, that's for sure. So let's see. Let's go down here. Um, dum -dum -dum -dum. Who's this? Oh, that's you? Wait, how did, that's you? Who? Ooh, okay. Um, let's find something. I don't, I don't see anything. Why are you? Who? Okay. I'm not going to say anything. Not gonna say anything. Um hold on, I'm recording. You okay? Okay, gotcha. Sorry, uh Betty, I do have a wee here, a wee situation. Oh, Betty out of coffee, say what? Oh, I bet you were asking for coffee there. Um, is that a Trump rally? Uh, let's see here. Um See, none of these, I can, I can choose any of them, and I know that they're not going to say, so I'm not going to fall for it. I'm not going to, I've done it too many times, and I don't, I don't find that your videos tell me what I need to know. Um, Amazon search, I don't, Amazon search two months ago, the search warrant, law enforcement doesn't have the knife. We know that. Why do you put that? Do I need to do some of this catch bait stuff? Is that what I'm doing wrong? Let me see. Okay. Okay. Oh, this one. Okay, I did watch this one. Let's let's talk about this one. Let's talk about this. Let's talk hey, about this. Hey, it's me, okay. your skin. Help Ooh, me maintain my moisture balance while exfoliating with CeraVe Renewing SA Cleanser. I went for a walk in the woods and I didn't get a single flea or tick on me. Because the ads are the 
pretty much, oh, Jesus, there you are. The only way I can make money. So let's see here. So I Betty, here else. it is Wednesday morning, um, March 1st. Today is March 1st. Okay. So March 1st. March 1st. You're reporting, looks like a hotel. Yeah, you got some pillows behind, some pillars. Okay. I'll put you over here. I'm going to put you over here. Okay. So you're recording from your motel bed. All right. No judging. No judging. Uh, and it says, Brian Koberger's supporters is advice to the audience. This is just nuts. Now, see, a, a reporter, a journalist is not going to say this is just nuts because that sentence right there, this is just nuts. It's not relevant to the story. And somebody would be like, well, just nuts. What, what kind of nuts are you talking about? The ones, I'm not going to go there. Just, okay. Just, it's just not a good way to do a title, but hey. First, good morning, everyone. So I'm Bull Horn Betty and I'm covering the Idaho Four. This is the uh, death of four university age students, Kaylee Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, Ethan Chapin, and Zana Kernodal. Uh, they were murdered in their off-campus housing on the outskirts of the University of Idaho campus in Moscow, Idaho, on November 13th in the early morning hours and believed to have been murdered between 4 a.m. and 4.25 a.m. in the morning. So there's been a lot of people coming out um, about Brian Koberger, about trying to prove this man's innocence. Really? And here is an article that I found on Reddit. Okay. So here is a article. Okay, hold on. Hold on. <sighs> On Reddit. If it's an article, I don't know. That it doesn't look like an article. Reddit is thread where people so I'm not understanding the article thing but I like I said the just nuts would be a problem too but you know I'm not an expert journalist so let's hear what you're gonna say on Reddit and it says zeroing in on Brian Koberger with DNA results I believe law enforcement only zeroed in on Brian Koberger after they received DNA results back then they researched him found his car similar to what they were looking for and obtained his cell phone records the lesson here one don't submit your DNA to genealogy sites and two don't give your phone number to cops who pull you over I'm not okay I'm gonna see if you're gonna <sighs> Brian didn't submit his DNA to a genealogy site. That's the problem here. Are you going to get into how they found out it was a partial DNA and it was a partial match to his father and LEO went, well, LEO law enforcement, um, for those of you who don't know, um, went and actually went through the garbage of who they figured the partial DNA um, was and it was Brian's father and they found a band-aid that he had um, disposed of and took the DNA from that to get that full it's isn't that the way it went or is it the yeah that's the way it went and then they they went to go and see which sons he had and it turned out to be Brian and then oh what do you know Brian they go to find Brian and he's a student at WSU it's not the way it went I you're gonna you're gonna tell me so I'm not gonna tell everybody but I just did oops not sure how I feel about that intro into this, but we'll continue to read. I understand if you read the probable cause affidavit, it tells a story that sounds like they tracked him down from the work of the WASU, which is Washington Wait, State University. What did you just say? What did you just say? Washington State University security guards reporting his car, but they just, but they are just putting events in order. There on. were so many white launch, but they just, but they are just putting events in order. There were so many white Elantras that it was virtually a dead end for police. No, no, and no, if the, there. which is Washington State University, security guards reporting no. his car, work of the WASU, which is Washington hey, State you, University, like they tracked him down from the work of the WASU, which is what Washington is State University. Wasu? What? What's a WASU? Are you kidding me? What's a WASU? Do you, are, do you mean WSU? Do you mean WASU? 
if you went, okay, oh, this is the problem. And this is why there is no need to go out to any of these places to cover anything. Because if you are not a local, you will be laughed out of that town. I dare you to go to Idaho and go back around and say, hey, can you take me, can you give me a ride to Wasu? 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 But you went to Idaho. Did you learn that? Did you take the, did you talk to anybody? Because they would have told you Wazoo. Wazoo. It's what we've called it since, well, since I was knee high to a grasshopper, because I'm from that right area. Um, a Wasu? Wasu. This tells me that you did not go out there to get the local lore, to go in and embroil yourself into the community to get the backstory from others to give details and and provide that to those that gave you the money if you don't even know how to say wazoo or to refer to wsu as washington state university as it is how could you Security guards reporting his car, but they just, but they are just putting events in order. There were so many white Elantras that it was virtually a dead end for police. And if the actual Elantra driver came forward, they would have had nothing to do with it and with it and still be blamed for the crime. So it, it kind of keeps people from wanting to volunteer that info. We don't know how many DNA profiles the police found in the house based on the importance of the case. I bet they took more samples than usual. And based on the parties at the house, they probably received a lot of DNA profiles that Um, you're going to get some revenue on this, even though you're going to strike me. I know, blah, blah, blah. But again. A profiles and most were not a match to anyone in the system or genealogy databases, except for one, Brian Koberger. I expect they, I expect they received the results back on 1222 or 1223 because they then issued a warrant for his phone records on 1223. And sometime after 1223, the police probably asked the forensic car team or sorry, car, forensic car person, if it could be a 2015 Elantra and also re-reviewed Dylan Mortensen to see if she could ID him or prove or provide more details. Her response, possibly, I don't know, but he had bushy eyebrows. Why did LE, law enforcement, aggressively go after Brian rather than taking him in for questioning first? Because they know that this is the only hope. The, the rest of the DNA results were, were a bust and the car thing was just way too generic to lead anywhere. I'm sure they looked at the usual suspects in the area, like those sex offender registry, but it turned up nothing. Everyone said they were sleeping and the police had nothing to indicate otherwise. My question to you all, did law enforcement say this was the only DNA? Did they say there were no samples found under the nails? My hunch is that there's much more to the story and Brian was the convenient scapegoat. Now everyone is ready to close up the evidence, knock down the house, and execute him at my firing squad. It's outrageous. <clears throat> this is on the Brian Koberger spot in Reddit. I am sorry, but I believe law enforcement has a heck of a lot more than just a small little, you know, bushy eyebrow comment from Dylan Mortensen and a spot of DNA on... Okay, once again, referring to something on Reddit as an article is incorrect at the very surface. That is a thread in a Reddit forum, okay? But when you're saying article, you are confusing your sponsors. We'll look at that in a moment. Now, once again, I don't know why you're broadcasting live from a hotel room. I don't know where you're at in this. But again, you did this March 1st. You had your sponsors send you to Idaho in November. So you should know all of the answers to this. You should have taken this apart five ways from sideways. I don't even know why you read it. It's just silly that you read it. Sorry that I had you all listen to it. But this is the kind of content that you provide, Betty. And what I had done, not to brag, but I'm just kind of telling you how unsuccessful my channel is because what I did is I procured all of the documents, all of the documents up to that date, um, showed all of the phone records, showed where they pinged off of, uh, and more details about that um vehicle 
how they put it together that it was him, the DNA, etc., etc. So how is what you did better than what I did? How are you making all of the money and getting all of the gifts and going to motels all over the United States to do this? And I'm at $86.90. I just want to know, what advice can you give me? Because... I have not looked at this for a little bit, but I thought that the way that it goes is that there's just a little tiny partial fingerprint. And I think that it's just on that. They say that it's on the sheath of the knife case. And I think they said it's just on that little snap. So when you put the other teaser over there, does the law enforcement have the knife? Of course they do not. They do not have the murder weapon. You know that. You know that. And I don't know why you would put up that months after you know they don't have it. And I think that it would have been a good point for you to have went in with the DNA. But I guess, like I'm saying, people don't want to hear what I'm saying. But I guess that's just the problem with the facts and the truth. I've got to learn to be just like you. Uh, but when you're calling it an article, you're inferring that a journalist wrote it. So you're giving that um, elevation there. You're putting this expectation on what you read that some journalist didn't do their job right. Whereas this is just anybody's opinion. This is just some probable 11-year-old sitting there in the dark in the basement putting this up. Like, don't do this. Don't put your, your DNA out there if you don't want to get caught if you're a murderer. Well, that's not the way this went down. So why would you waste? Is it part of the spell? Do you just dazzle and confuse them until they're so confused that they give you money, Betty? Is that what I need to do? Because I don't know. I, I'm not getting it. I certainly would not ever say Hwasu, ever. The sheath. The beginning of this, going into this article, it says, don't give your DNA to databases and don't give your number to law enforcement if they pull you over. It's okay, well, if person. you're a criminal, maybe those are the things you don't want to do. Um, at the end of the day, to say that it's our fault for taking a test with DNA, uh, with a genealogy site, and, you know, God forbid you get pulled over, don't cooperate with law enforcement. That is such a better messaging for the public than just saying, hey, let's not go and murder four innocent people in their home while they are trying to sleep. Let's what? just not give law enforcement our phone numbers and don't check your genealogy because if you commit a crime, they might get you through the genealogy database. Give me a break. And not only that, but you realize that there are so many people that don't even know that they're- But was his dad that- Related that are getting these genealogy tests, it still would have traced back to Brian Koberger. At the okay, end of the yeah. day, uh, watching the Alec Murdoch trial, we learned a lot. We learned a lot about um, cell phone towers, how phones work and function, and more importantly, on star data in the black box in our car and how those items help convict people. We hear through the probable cause affidavit of Prep Payne uh, about this phone number and plotting the, the phone track. Then we hear about this white Elantra and we see and, and, and we read that it was seen in videos, multiple videos. And it was very distinguished because at the time it did not have front and back license plates, only a back license plate, which is typical of Southern states. Of what? Of Southern states. It's typical of southern states. No, it's typical of many states. It's only a requirement in certain states to have a license plate on both the front and the back. And I don't like it because it was to enable the red light cams. I don't think that it's a requirement in Washington state um, nor Idaho. But um, it's been a long time since I've lived there. So I don't know if they've changed things. But I never had a front plate. I don't like the way looks and it just you know messes with the whole aesthetic of the car and everything like that but um I, like i say and I, I would have taken the opportunity to i mean is the, betty are you telling me that i need to dumb it down for people are you telling me that i just need to put a couple of words say that somebody else didn't do something right so then it makes you look better so i can just pick any like thing that doesn't look right on a reddit thread and then cite it and then act like i'm much smarter than that and then people will give me money is that what i do after listening to the Alex Murdoch trial, I realized that they have a heck of a lot more than just some minor DNA. And again, we talked about this at length. And the at length part was that, you know, he's not getting away with this. They have more information. Um, I guarantee that they have his OnStar data. He's plugged his phone into the car. We know that the cars can download stuff from phones. We know they can tell when the car is engaged and moving. So there's a lot more to this case than that. Yeah, that's why we have access to how they tracked him down and Betty Andra this is this is not even funny because you're reporting this 
March 1st, when you had been out there almost five months prior, in November, well, the end, okay, we'll go back and forth. Did you not read all of the phone logs and the way they triangulated and explain that to your sponsors? They've been forthcoming in the fact that they don't have a lot other than the phone data and the little amount of DNA. But with the size of a mustard seed, you know, you can move mountains, they're saying. So we, we hope that they have more. We're not guaranteeing anything. To say anything like that is kind of weird, but I, the OnStar, Brian Koberger wanted to be a law enforcement officer to promote his specialization in phone data and how that can go forward in convicting individuals as he did not think that the police departments had that technology yet. He wanted to bring that. He was very aware of what he was doing and therefore he was turning off his phone when he was in certain areas. So no, he is not your basic criminal. This is a man who was becoming a professor. He was a, a teacher's aide, so he could sit there and look at all of the papers that others were writing and, and really glean how other people thought. And, and he was working towards being in law enforcement, but he probably wasn't going to stop there. He's probably going to become, I don't, I don't know where he would have stopped with his education, but he was definitely seeking more. He really was going into that whole phone thing. So he knew all of that. I don't know why you're saying something different. I also believe that what is going to seal Brian Koberger's fate is the fact that he went to that house multiple times. Um, he obviously was stopping them. So I just what is your definition of stalking? That house was a party house. That house had four, six, how many? Well, let me see. There were six people in it that night, but there were countless other people there at any given time. There were six people on the lease. Um, most people knew the code to the door. It's essentially, well, you were there. It's essentially across the street from where he would have been there for a permissible purpose to have been there to go to the college to pick up papers to grade them. That same cell phone tower that's going to ping for him going there for his job is going to be the same one that's going to ping whether or not he was at that house or not, whether or not he's in that block or not. He had a permissible purpose. This isn't like, oh, okay, this house is in the middle of nowhere. And this car keeps going out there and, and there's no connection to anybody there. Nothing could be further from the truth. As you know, as you saw, that house was right across the street from campus. Brian was a TA on the campus, still attending classes there as well. What, what did you miss, Betty? Just curious, what do you think about this article? Do you agree with it or disagree with it? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. God bless each and every one of you. And until next time, please be safe. Okay. So. Oh, four. This is the uh, death of four university age students. Kaylee Gonzalez, Maddie Mogan, Ethan Chapin, and Zana Kernodal. The way that you just framed that up. And you kept saying this is an article. Like I say, this is just this is just a comment in a Reddit thread that you took out because it was something that you could feel superior in intelligence to. Okay, so then what you did here is you tagged this to everybody. Okay, I understand the the thing case discussion with bullhorns. Okay, I don't understand. I don't understand how putting that in about the DNA anyway. So then you set this up so that then you make these people feel important like you in that then their answers, um, you know, this one says here, well, my DNA is very easy to get a hold of. It's on ancestry and heritage. I've done two of them. Love you. You're the best. For sure, Ellie will have a lot more on Brian than what we know they would 
they would not lock up a man now ready if they didn't have enough evidence. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. And then there you go. Hear what you said as this journalist, their leader. Then this person says, that's just nuts. There you go. They copied you. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they want to wear your skin. I don't know. But now for a journalist, like you like to be called and given all this money, you have a duty to that. But now you have these people repeating this. So they're going to go out into something and say, that's just nuts. That's just nuts. Well, what's just nuts? What are you talking about? What is just nuts? What's nuts? Okay, it doesn't make sense. I've been totally crazy. I disagree with the writer in uh, completely. It's not a writer. It's somebody who wrote something. Well, I guess they wrote. They did a, it's not an article. You're, uh, But then the way that she puts it is DNA of any kind is crucial to solving the most of heinous crimes. The PE wouldn't just willy nilly arrest somebody if they weren't sure. This that person must also have something to hide. PE. What would PE and what's willy nilly? I, this is making a lot of sense as to, do I need to find these kinds of people. I need to find these kinds of people to, to get into my, that's what I've got to do. I, I, Betty, I'm learning. And then it, this person says, I, I disagree with it. I think there's going to be a lot more proof coming up in the court proceedings. Well, we would hope so. And then this person says it. And I think that this actually explains a lot about um, your, your supporters. Because it says that I actually agree with the article and I have a lot of comments to make about it. And so what you said, unfortunately, I'm legally blind and the text size on my phone is too small to read and accurately type a lengthy comment. If we knew each other better, I'd gladly come on a panel sometime that, that interests you. I'm totally unfamiliar with you and your channel outside of this video. Okay, so this person does not know you. Okay, so they gave the most intelligent thing, but they said that they don't know you at all other than this video. And they would certainly like to talk about that with you. And they'd love to go on a panel with you and discuss it. Little does this person know, you will never, ever let anybody go in an interview that you cannot fully control. Because it is all about you and the people you pretend are with you to get other people who are probably brain damage to give you money like this. Now, this person thinks that they've got, you know, really something relevant to add. And it says, last year, my Apple phone tracked how many steps I took per day. I wasn't aware that my phone was doing that. What the fuck? You have step tracker on your phone. That's one of the things that your watch can do. It's part of your biometrics. That's not gonna... I don't know how that's relevant to this. But... As you've dumbed this down... Maybe you're doing this on, pur on purpose. You're dumbing it down so then the dummies think that they're important and they're giving you all their money. I don't know. And then it says, was this written by BK's parents... As you were reading that, that's all I could think. Um, yeah, I don't... Oh. I... Oh. And then this one says, the, the one piece of DNA that we know on the sheath is shaky by the LE's own admission. Okay, so that person knows that. Exactly. It says one little piece on the sheath. And then it says when they filed for the arrest, they advised the judge not to consider the sheath DNA because it may not hold up in court. Oh, we'll see. And then it says, I'm sorry, I'm just not filling me with confidence. Or that's, I'm sorry, that's just not filling me with confidence in their case. They better have a lot more solid DNA linking him to these victims, or there has been a terrible miscarriage of justice going on here. Okay, where are we going with terror? Okay. Mm. Betty, when you don't tell them that, and, and show them all of the, legal documents to this point they can start to think that is that where you go with this are you sly like a fox 
and and this is this is what is that maybe I just tell the whole story too much and I need to stop. Okay. Anyway, now you got this person here thinking this, right? She says, I disagree with the article. It sounds like the writings of an amateur journalist with no sense of modern day technology and scientific data. By the statements made, knocking the doors down and executing him. It gave an impression of a family member in my opinion. I don't know. Again, you you refer to it as an article, so then somebody thinks you're citing an article which if you cite an article you should say okay i found this in you know like okay you say the the ap you know that or the new york's times or whatever and it was written by this journalist all of these things you did not do when you're citing this article this is just one very very uh minor maybe minor example of how i was frustrated and i could not support your channel and i started looking into some of the things that you've done that are not honest. And I'm surprised and confused as to why you have any subs, let alone so many. And then you go here and then you have, woo, what a bunch of hooey. The person who wrote this article sounds like a criminal or BK's parents. I bet LE has so much more than we know. Keep on trucking, Betty. Okay. The person, nobody wrote an article. It was a thread in Reddit. It was just something that anybody could have wrote. Like, don't be putting your DNA or they're going to get you. And when you get pulled over, don't give them your phone number. Well, you know what? Do you want a ticket? If if you if you want to if you want to sit there and act real flippant and defiant, you're going to get a ticket if you act as nice as can be and you're very accommodating and apologetic that whatever asshole behavior you did that got you pulled over, you feel bad for and you apologize for, you may not get that ticket. But if you're going to be like, I'm not going to give you a phone number. Uh, yeah, Go fly a kite, mister. They're going to be like, sign here for your ticket. I, uh, I don't know what is going on here. But even if you just search over here to the right, It'll pop up and it says, hear it, Brian Koberger search warrants unsealed. So you could even go, Betty, and you don't have to get everybody's money. You could um, watch. I know that you don't like all of them because you seem to really only like um, a couple people on headline news. But you could watch where they get the documents and then figure it out and go and source them. Um, uh uh, and then you've got somebody here who says, I disagree with that article. And then the next, oh, wow. You have all, you have three people in a row that say the exact same thing. Well, the first one starts it. It says, I disagree with this article. I would always give my details to Ellie and my DNA. Why? Because I haven't anything to hide. Well, that's wonderful. All right, sure. I agree. I don't have anything to hide either, but I'm not going to go volunteer it up. You know, know. Anyway, the next three things say, I disagree with that article. I disagree with that article. I disagree with that article. All at the same, like relatively same time because nothing's in between. It makes you wonder if those three subscribers are actually one person. Be it you only have 20 comments and that's the thing is I don't understand how you have so few comments in interaction but that many subscribers I really don't know I, I mean I, I don't know what you're doing that I'm not and like I say as a young young creator I've got to figure it out but uh I don't know. I I don't know why people don't question you. Oh, when you they question you, then you delete them and you block them and you take the comments out. So that's what I'm missing. Okay. So then 
this is, you know, you have this Idaho content and this is in March. And then from here, you know, you, you keep saying that you're going to Idaho, you're raising this money, you need this money, you're, you need this money to do this, you need this money to do that. Um, well, you know, it's feasible as there was, um, more Coburger hearings. I wasn't sure why you needed to go back and be present for the hearings as you've obviously found Google links to be able to go to watch these through Zoom and stream, stream them, even though it's not what you're supposed to be doing, you do it. So if you can figure out that te technology to be able to do that, then why do you need to fly to these places? And then the other question I have is, okay, you don't work. Well, we call this work. How can this pay for your house payment, car payment, insurance, electricity, phone, going on these air flights, staying in these hotels, a $50 a meal, how do you have any money? Now, I thought that you said that you had severe back pain, and I totally empathize with you as I do too. So, you know, flying is very difficult for me. Driving is difficult. I you know, There's a lot of different things that we do to kind of break it up so that I can still participate in life, but it's difficult, and I have to really manage that with my physical therapist and really do different things. And so how can you do that with all the back pain? And then I thought that you said that you were on SSI for your back pain. Is that true or did I mishear that, Betty? I was just wondering. So then let's go back and see what more I can learn from you. Because now I live here in Minnesota. And so when you were saying that you were in the land of tornadoes, I didn't know what you are talking about. And then I heard that you were in Minnesota. Now I live in Minnesota, as you know. I'm sure you know everything about me. I'm sure you've around my background. And like I say, I'm very boring. Sorry to disappoint. Okay. So in this, let's see, let me go over here because the money that you raised to go to Idaho, you went to a Trump rally instead. And then you went to Minnesota. So you raise money to go to Idaho. I don't know where the Trump rally was, but you're doing these things. We're saying, oh, you can't go anywhere because of the haters, because of the haters. Well, the haters aren't stopping you from going where you're going. And if your true intent is to raise awareness for the victims, then why are you hiding where you're going? How is that helping anybody? How is that getting the word out that people should be looking for this person? should be interested. And now as for the case here in Minnesota that we have of missing mom, Madeline Kingsbury, it's one that's that's very sad. It's, it's not uh, going to take a rocket scientist to figure out what happened. Now, every single thing about that case that we know of, I've already been able to cover everything and more of what you've said. And I live an hour away and I've not been down there because law enforcement does not want us coming down there. And I'll expound. Why did you think that you needed to fly there? So I came over here to look at this and you, this one said Madeline King's very quick rundown, right? Looks better. So I started to read that to see Just if you had anything that I didn't know and I couldn't find anything. Highway 43. So when Highway 43 turns off of I-90, you, you, you follow that. It's all farmland. The, the internet, I had, two, I had my phone on me and I had my hot, box, or my hot spot on me and neither one of them work and I drive. Adam says that he left the house around 10 a.m. in the morning okay. and he did not return back. <laughs> I'm sorry. This is weird. I don't know why that came up. It's by Tragedy Pimps. Sorry. I don't know why that would have came up accidentally. 
<gasps> says, let's eat with JLR. Investigates, bring a snack. Tragedy pimps exposed. How did that happen? You saw that I popped up one of your videos. Betty, I'm sorry. I know you're not associated with those people at all. Oh, my God. How weird. Let's see here. So... Um, Chronicles Olivia, you're not with her anymore. Bullhorn Sound Glare. All these things come up when you do. Let's see here. All, all these things. All these things. So, Betty, let me see here. Thank you for your patience. Was trying to see what you were saying about Madeline. And. Huh. What? Why are you going to spank your mama? It says Mama Bullfarm is spank you. Oh, no. Oh, and then this other question, Betty, is that your mom had knee surgery and you don't look like a spring chicken. I'm sorry. I I don't know if you're older than me or not. I am 51. Um, I don't know. I, you might look older than me. I, I don't know. I, I don't know your age. I do apologize. But your mom can't be young based on logistics and knee surgery is among the most painful surgeries that a human can have um it 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 takes a long recovery why weren't you just there with your mom it was mother's day weekend and your mom had that surgery there was nothing here in minnesota that the locals here couldn't have covered and there was nothing in idaho that was happening so why weren't you with your mom Anywho, trying to find out what you've done for Maddie Kingsbury that I couldn't do. Okay, so let's see here. One day ago, I oh just okay, okay. So here was this one that you were doing where I started over here with the Maddie. Okay, and then it went to the tragedy pimps. I don't know why. This was my skin in 2022, and this is my skin going into 2023. My rosacea was constantly you. flaring up, and my face literally looked like a tomato like most of the time. You really have these ads in here. Is that what I'm not doing? Well, I, I think I do have the ads crammed on too because it is you know it's not making me much money, but you know what? Maybe it will. Um. Let me see here. And acne stuff. I don't know. I don't know. What do we think? Oh, she's got a squishmallow in her bed. What do you know? So anyway, let's see. Okay. Okay. Enough. Can we skip the ads? Yay. So you were saying before this. The, the internet. I had, to, I had my phone on me and I had my hotbox on. You might be asking yourself, can you actually create high quality live streams for free? Well, with StreamYard, the answer is... Yes. How do you have so many ads in here, Betty? Oh, Lord. Okay, so I guess that if I hit something that goes to the last video, I'm sorry. Um, let me see. I'm just really no techie girl. Let's see. So there's my Madeline. Um content we'll go back over here i was trying to see what you said about back pain because i was trying to figure that out and let's see here you've got candace wells what kind of mother were you a mom betty I saw people wishing you a happy mother's day Okay, let's see here. All right. I want to see what you said about Maddie Kingsbury because you said that, is it just in your lives that I've got to find one more time? I think that sometimes it's, difficult to find videos maybe if i did i'm gonna go back here now i realize you, if you push play or if you push the other one it goes back to the last video or whatever okay so here we go let's go over here you've got this here which says about Matt. i guess it's, it's so um 
it's hard. It, it, it really is. But you, you, you know they're out there. There's, there's one that's just obsessed with me. It's starting to get scary, obsessive. They're actually calling. There's one creator out there actually calling me a liar about something that happened to me 20 years ago when I was talking about oh. it, and people that were in here. And I'm not going to bring their name up because it's not even worth it. it they're using, trying to use about? reverse psychology on me to dig into records that has martial law that they're not entitled to. That's what they're what trying to do. And uh, because I was a victim of a crime. And so I, I, and I'm not even going to deal with that. But you know what it did Marilyn do? Kingsley. It inspired me because about? I haven't reached out on my case in a while. And I haven't. It, I put it in a vault and I've left what? it there. And now seeing, hearing about that, that office. What? Okay. I don't get it. You're supposed to be talking about Maddie. What are you doing? What, you know, is going on in my case? Again, I haven't spoke to a, a detective in my case for years, literally years. And um, so if nothing, I always try to find the silver lining, you know, even in the bad and the ugly, even with trolls. And in this particular silver lining is, you know, it, it's going to make me want to open that up and say, you know, what the heck? You know, I'm in a different uh, different position 20 years than I was back then. And, you know, it took almost three years for them to process um, the kits because we had such what a backlog at the FDLE. Like so, you know, at this point, you know, I've got the Bullhorn Betty channel now, you know, I can make a lot more noise and I can put a lot more pressure on my own uh, the police department to be doing something more because it has been so long. When was the last time they ran it through CODIS? When's the last time? You know, there's a lot of stuff, but we'll talk about, about that on another day, but it did inspire me to make the decision that I am going to uh, start looking at it, you know, looking at it again. And, um, okay, this is what I don't understand. What does this have to do with Maddie? I started it and I got confused and then everybody's telling you happy mother's day over here. And I thought that you said once that you don't have kids, so I don't know why I was wishing you a happy Mother's Day. I don't know on your channel. I get confused. That's why, you know, anyway. Finding out what's going on because, it, like I said, you know, after this many years, you kind of give up hope and you just kind of got to put it in a, in a spot. Um, you just kind of got to put it in a spot. So uh, it's been placed there, but, you know, nothing more. It has now inspired me to look into uh, finding out why it's taking so long and what have they been doing in 20 years on my case. You're so it's, it's you know, one of those things where, hey, I I'll go there with a sign. And my bullhorn and sit out there and make their life a living hell until I get some damn answers because Where? I can do that now. Back then, I didn't know I could. Who? <laughs> right? What? So anyways, getting back to Maddie Kingsbury, one interesting oh. perspective that I did not, and I don't know if you guys noticed that either. I never noticed it on news articles or anything, um, that that was a duplex. They have yeah. somebody, that, if the person, and I actually know, they do have. Okay. So I live here and I put out all of this information in, oh gosh, um, Maddie's been missing since um march 31st going into that april 1st that weekend where we had an extreme blizzard um one of the worst our state has had especially that late um so i had put all of this out there i don't know what relevance it is that she was in a duplex but i certainly put that out there and i did that for my computer i did not need to get a bunch of money, tell people I was going to Idaho, but not really say that I was going anywhere and then not go to Idaho, but then go to Minnesota and then do that. I, see, this is what I'm saying, Betty, is that you don't need to take all this money, especially with your back pain like that. You can't be hurting yourself. You have such terrible back pain. It's disabling back pain and everything, like you said. And if you're getting SSI for that back pain, you should not be traveling like this because, uh, ugh, ugh, well, don't even get me started about that kind of fraud. But anyway. Somebody that lives next to him because there was a vehicle in that driveway. I'm almost 100% positive there was a vehicle in that driveway. What? There was a vehicle in the driveway? Wait, okay, hold on. What difference does it make if there was a vehicle in what driveway? If it's a duplex, what difference does it make if there was a vehicle in the driveway here? What were you here? You were here, what, March 13th, March 14th, May, May 13th, May 14th. Um, if she went missing on March 31st, what difference would it make if there was a car in the duplex driveway here in May? What difference would that make? I Like I say, as a young creator, I've got to figure out what you're doing that I'm not doing because, you know, i got to figure this out. <sighs> okay, so you're saying there's a vehicle there. Let me see here. And I'm not going to be giving you guys the, the, the goods just yet because I want to edit it. There was a lot that we, I do quite a bit on the case. So where is okay. it? When did I get to her home? Stop there. I think it's this one. TikTok made me do it. If you use TikTok, you might have seen videos like these recently. I mean, seriously, you have this quick rundown, Maddie Kingsbury. And we are to, well, you know, we're in the two minute 46. We've heard you talk about people who are stalking you, uh, harassing you, old records, blah, 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 blah. That people are just always picking on you. 
and you can't figure out why and then all these ads and it, can you ever say anything about the actual victims and and what have you done to make a difference that all of that money given to you has made a difference and i've got to figure this out Sometimes the hormones helping your nerves communicate this huh? is it nope you can't oh no nope. hold on that can't be it. that's the that's the drive there it is nope. This is what I'm talking about, Betty. Come on. I don't know. Awesome footage. Oh, awesome footage. Oh, this is when I couldn't find the house. I did find it eventually. Of what? Tell us. You're a journalist. If you want to... You're Hold on, guys. I, I have so much footage here. Okay. Oh, here it is. is this it? Come on. You're a okay, journalist. Okay, here it is. No, there was no car in the front. I thought I passed the car. On. Because... Hold on. Let me pause it. Sorry. So there it is. Right there. Oh, that right there is their neighbor. Shit. That's, that's the... That's shit. the... Um, this what? is a duplex. Okay. You are such a professional there. Look at how you just showed every single picture in your camera roll to us. <laughs> and now, I mean, like I say, Betty, you're such a professional. So every single thing here, where, where are they? Oh, oh, that looks so familiar. Is that all from the Trump rally? And you're holding this up. Those look like, are those Trump rally pictures? <laughs> I I can't believe that you would show your whole camera roll. Oh, oh my god. Anyway, um well sunglasses. I gotta figure out those sunglasses. Whoops. Betty, you have to stop this with your hair. Like seriously, my hair, my stylist would not touch mine for after I had the COVID, because the COVID's very difficult on a uh, on a girl's hair. Um, would not touch it. Would not touch it with any kind of bleach or anything. Um, and so I think he made me wait like nine months and now we're just very, very putting in very little because there's just so much hurt in it. Um, I don't know that you should be doing this and how can you feel right using other people's money to get your hair done? That's why my hair isn't done. I'm not getting anybody else's money and I don't have money to do my hair. Um, the way I had my hair done before was because I used to do hair modeling. My hair used to be nice before COVID. But how can, and then you paid all this money for the pink, which you knew was a temporary color. Pink is not going to be a permanent color. After you get your hair colored, go as long as you possibly can without shampooing it. So it really sets. Um, I go probably, you know, three to five days after I've colored, I use the dry shampoo, you know, and just really let my hair, you know, just not, um, be traumatized by anything. I use very little heat on it. Uh, just really don't, you know, braid it or something, but certainly don't go in. What did, I don't know. You said you washed it out. I don't know. So how does this, it's noon. You are sitting around in a hotel on somebody else's dime. Acting like you're cover acting like you're covering a case in a motel at noon and you think your big breaking thing is is that six weeks after Maddie has disappeared you saw a car in the driveway, but now that you've determined that there wasn't one, yes, she lived in a duplex. Yes. She was a full time student at Winona and she was finishing up and uh, she worked hard. She didn't do anything other than go to work and school. She was doing her research projects. She loved her kids. Those are the things you got to say. I don't know how it would be important if there was a car in the driveway six weeks later of the duplex. But that's, that's what your audience wants to know? Well, let's see. How many people are actually in this chat? We've got one. Not many. Two, three, four. Okay, five there in that whole thing. And they're just all talking back and forth to each other. Um, not paying attention to what you're saying. So, and it doesn't, there's no car there. So, I, but I do see something, I do see a blue light on. 
so on that side. Right. And it does look like there's something in the driveway with hose. And it doesn't look like it's not manicured. So it does look like potentially somebody was there. Uh, but I don't know if somebody was there that morning or if there was potential of somebody actually hearing something that could have potentially went off in that house. But they live next to somebody. And from what... Okay, the significant other is still in that home. So he could have his driveway there, yes. We've had a very late spring. We are just now starting to be where we might think about mowing the lawn for the first time this season. So to say that it's taken care of, the yard's taken care of or whatever, is not breaking news. What we're understanding is that Maddie was getting ready to leave Adam. If that, if that information is accurate and she was getting ready to leave Adam, then there was that poor part of her, uh, there, or there, there must have been some kind of disagreements inside that household that maybe that neighbor that's at 467 could have potentially heard. So, so I would think that the law enforcement would have interviewed that neighbor with those thoughts. And yes, it is true. As I said, from the comfort of my home on the computer, not making anybody feel guilty for not giving me money going anywhere on anybody else's dime. I have reported all of this. I have shown that, yes, she had an ad out where she was looking for a place to go, that, yes, she went to the court and she got full custody of the children awarded to her, that she was leaving on that date. She was moving out that weekend. That last weekend was move out. That's why I've talked about um, how that was most likely a separation assault, um, high risk of it when you're leaving. Um, I've covered all of this. Why, if you say that you work with other people and you say that you work with others, then why don't you know this? Why are you reporting this three days ago when this was already public record and already covered you can look at my videos, Betty, and find these things. And then you can cooperate and, and actually cooperate with others and find these facts. You don't look so... But you have to share your subs and money with me. Oh, I'm, not, I'm just really unsure. But I will tell you this. This is the one thing that I find really, really bizarre. And um, that is the drive. Adam says that he left the house around 10 a.m. in the morning. And he did not return back until 1.30 because he had to run errands. We learned from law enforcement that I buy the same products you do, oh, only Lord. I get them much cheaper. I save Thank hundreds of dollars a month. Are you kidding? How do you have this set for so many ads when you are getting so much money from others? Do you have to have all of the money? Do you have to take all of the money from everybody and not let anybody else have any of the money? Is that what this is about? I mean, I apologize to my subs that they have to watch those ads, but it's the only way that I'm going to make any money. As I said, I'm almost at, almost at 100. I'm at 86. But you have so many here. It's you really need to tough. ask. They just show up automatically. We learned from law enforcement that he traveled to County Road 12 and Highway 43 in Winona County, and he went southbound on Highway 43 uh, to the eastern part of Fillmore County. Uh, and then he traveled back Highway 43, 43 and he traveled from 10 a.m. to 1.30 p.m., three and a half hours. We drove that, 45 minutes. Who is we? So round trip there and back is one and a half hours. So that left him one and a half hours. Who is we? Who's with you there? If, if you are taking money from others, saying that this is the work that you do, you're sitting alone in a motel room at noon, Talking about this, saying we drove this. Who is we and why are you doing this? I guess that that comes down to it. Of course, we know exactly where he was. We knew exactly where the roads that he said he was in. That's why the police know of a very concise, essentially, what do you say, like a circumference, like a a drag like a, a target a targeted area so based on the time that he was unaccounted for probably by the person in the duplex or his other neighbors saying yes they saw him leave at this time okay we know that he was only gone for that much so you say how far could he have went in this direction that direction and the other and that is why in an area that is so rural 
There's been blizzards and there's been flooding down there. There's a lot of area that is not safe to walk. They do not want us down there unless we are part of an organized search team that you schedule and law enforcement talks to you about what you are supposed to do, what you are not supposed to do. They do not want anybody coming out there that is not part of that, part of the schedule and signed up. They have canceled searches on several days because of the flooding and the risk that it could happen to the land if anybody who's not authorized to be on that land could do to a potential crime scene. There have been multiple horseback riders that have gotten together from different cities and the adjoining states, and they've met up, they've borrowed each other's horse trailers, they've ridden together, they brought their horses, and they have done amazing things in the equestrian world where they have covered the land that we can't on foot, and they account for that area that they have searched, and they let the law enforcement know. So there is different areas that are searched very carefully and very strategically and then reported. Additionally, law enforcement has reached out to all of the landowners in the area that we could have been at based on that time frame and had those landowners go out with their tractors, their trucks and whatnot and search their land because it's very rural. These things have all been done. All done by people who aren't asking for a dime, who are working together, who are volunteering. Why do you think that you need money to do this? What is the money that you are taking from innocent people? What is it doing? It's feeding you and allowing you to go to Trump rallies. And that's it. And that is the God's honest truth. Don't look at me like that. We're going to listen to you one more time. Maybe several times because this is the truth and this is why people are calling you out. It doesn't mean that they're stalkers. It doesn't mean that they're cockroaches. It means that they are calling you out because it's time that somebody should. That to continue to lie to people and deceive them with what you're doing isn't right. But let's go I'm here from again. Florida and uh, I have a true my adventures here to all these Trump rallies because we've been a lot of them. I'm from Florida and uh, I have a true crime podcast, but we're here and that actually supports my adventures here to all these Trump rallies because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from Florida. And, and if that's what you're doing, so what? Just be honest. Maybe you'd even make more. Who knows? Maybe it would be said, maybe you could say, hey, I like to get up here and talk about true crime. And I like to go to Trump rallies. So can you give me some money so that I can go to the Trump rallies? And then maybe make content out of the Trump rally. Maybe you'd make more. But the dishonesty hurts us all as creators. I am one of the creators who would support No more income given to creators by e-begging. I think that it should be an option on the person's description as to how they would accept money if the person who's watching feels that they are so inspired to give you a tip. But to continue to ask for money, beg for money, intimidate people because they're not giving you enough, imply that this money is doing this and that when it's not, you're going to take it away from all of us. And I don't care because I'm one of the ones who's not making any money on it because I'm embarrassed to ask people for money to fund something. Okay. I put my own money into this and do I have that kind of money? No, but I'm just hoping that at some point I'll break even. I like doing what I'm doing. I like being a part of the greater good and putting truth out there, but I don't know what you're doing. And the fact that you're lying makes us all look like liars. Unless we show that we do unless we show that we do not support what you're doing. 
So by us showing that we do not support it, then you're going to compromise our channels. You're going to compromise our safety by going and giving our personal information. You're going to try and take us to court. You do this. Oh, I'm talking us and whatever. Yeah, because you talking we too. So you're going to take me to court. You're going to get my financial aid. Go ahead. Take it. It's all I have to offer. Financial aid, debt. But you probably already read my background. You already know that. Anywho. Let's continue. Unaccounted for. And I did realize the reason why I believe they saw him and knew that that van was at County Road in Highway 43 is because when I went there, there was a fire station on that corner. So, there was a fire station. So, so they're, they're, they do have video footage. So, they do have video footage. Not a lot. Not a lot. In their area, it's a... um. I want to say about 20, it's under 25,000 people that live in that, that particular area. In this area that he was going, the eastern part of Fillmore, is desolate. When wait, 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 wait. What did you just say? Okay, we're going to go here. And, and just because, let's, let's, just, let's just talk facts here. Because you just put it there, so let's say... So it has one fire station. If that fire station is in that circular area, so what? We know that they saw that there are there's a gas station that had a camera somewhere else. They have not said could be that fire station, sure. Why they put out the information asking for other people who had seen that van out in the area at that time. And if they could call in and say which direction it was going, okay? The reason why they want to know that specifically is because we were having that blizzard. That blizzard was hitting that first day that she went missing. There was a lot of storms. There was... There was thunder and lightning and, and high winds. And then we went into that big, big blizzard. And the state patrol basically didn't want us on the road. There were too many wrecks all over the road to cover as it was. So state patrol was saying low visibility, stay home. Very few cars on the road. So the fact that he was out is unaccounted for where he went. He was the last person to see her. They had both went home. After dropping the kids off from daycare, Maddie said she wanted to stay home. He then left. That's the story. Okay. So we go with that. Yes, the few businesses in town, anybody else who had whatever, that's why on my channel I reported that, you know, people out here have trail cams, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. They know that he was out. His vehicle was seen by at least one gas station. Why did you need to take money from people to go to a Trump rally? I mean, and then come to Idaho, Minnesota to say that. I already put that on my channel. That's already well known. That is common knowledge. Why did you need to come out here? Say that. How how is that? How are you being a good steward of the money given to you by that? When you enter into that area, it has a population of like eighteen hundred. There's like one family dollar there, and and I'm sitting here thinking and scratching my head and saying everything he would have needed. I mean, there's no, they don't have. I mean, you see that the house that the they don't have like cows. They don't need feed stores. Their their house is not really that big where they could have um you know a whole lot of animals so I, I don't see them going to a big you know type of store but they would have one closer to them in Winona they, they, there was nothing there there was like a family dollar in a gas station and a bunch of silos and farmland and I kept the whole every time I, I kept driving and you might even hear my commentary if I, if I release the commentary portion and just don't use it as a video but I'm sitting there like what errands would he be running here the best way to burn fat and get Jesus. shredded is not keto paleo it's not carnivore it's not vegan and, it's and then another ad and this is what I'm saying is it Yes, there's that, but you've, well, I guess in three minutes of content tagged with Maddie Kingsbury, 
You've said nothing that you couldn't have found from your computer. There was no reason to come out here. The little bit of things that you think that you've done could have been found. But like me, I live close and we're not supposed to go. I have communicated with the family. Not family themselves, but through the ways that they want us to. When they've asked for searches and said, I'm available. Do you need more searchers, more volunteers? They had all of the spots covered on the days when I was available. Like I say, it's very, very concise. So again, there's not many different people in your chat talking, which is interesting, but very telling. Let's see here. I'm going to read what the family said because I'm wondering if you went after somebody in the family because things didn't make sense. Oh, 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 shit. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Okay. Oh, okay. This is actually genuine. I'm going to put it on my community page. I was going to talk to, I was going to read off another thing a couple weeks ago when they had, the family had been approached. But this is out here right now as of 15 hours ago. It says... Attention to the public of Winona, Fillmore, and Houston counties. It has come to our attention that influencers, YouTubers, and podcast hosts are traveling to the area to freelance report for their collective followings regarding Madeline's case. Law enforcement, along with Maddie's friends and family, ask to please avoid engaging with them. External reporting Freelance reporting with independent of official sources has been associated with investigation issues and impersonating official press. Oh my, you, here you go. So this was, this is, this is 15 hours old. Here I am reporting here in the middle of the night here on the 17th. You, you were here three days ago and now this has to be put out. You have done your shit again. And people support this. Oh my god. All right. Impersonating official press. Interesting. We, as Maddie's friends and family, wish to keep the investigation as uncomplicated as possible and any information shared remains clear and accurate. If you are a content creator of any kind we trust that you have the best interest of maddie's case at heart with this at the forefront of your practice please be respectful of our collective wishes and use the information that law enforcement entities and our page posts reposts for the most up-to-date information we want our girl home and the process to remain unhindered thank you that's what i'm doing that is what I do as a responsible creator. So why am I sitting down here making $86 collectively for the whole year total with 1,600 subs when you're getting money to go around and terrorize victims, their friends, and their families, and people are paying you to do it? Once again, as a young creator, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong because you're the one making all the money. You're the one with all the subs. I'm doing exactly what I am supposed to be doing by the letter of the law and by the terms of YouTube. So what is going on here? I wouldn't say that this is directed at you, Betty, but it is. Wow. 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 Four days ago, four days ago, four days ago, if right now I'm recording and it's going into the 18th, four days ago is when you were here. Mother's Day. The post for Mother's Day says, due to some unforeseen circumstances, we will not be hosting a search this weekend. We ask that since Madeline cannot spend time with her children, nor her mother's, 
Squeeze yours a little tighter. Tell your little ones you love them a few extra times because Madeline can't. Thank you for all of your love and your support during this difficult time. So they cancel the search. Wonder why. Could it have anything to do with her coming? Now, six days ago, there was indeed at the First Congressional Church of Winona a gathering for the community. The local grocer, Heidi Floral, provided beautiful flowers for it. The community is thankful and they say they've been truly blessed. Six days ago. So let's see. Wonder what day of the Trump rally was. Because this happened, this was on six days ago. So this must have been Friday night. Was that the church service that you went to? Okay. So basically they said the last time that they've done this. Okay, so. They canceled the search on the weekend of the 6th and the 7th. That's when I was going to. No, that, uh, that's not when I uh, think of the, other, the day before that. Um, they had canceled and it, it's because here, this was two weeks ago. Um, they, they had canceled cause they, the areas that they want focused on are smaller in size and, um, the police and Minnesota United are confident that these areas can be adequately searched by the smaller groups of friends, family, and sisters. And it says that, um, they're working on a large scale search for the following weekend as the conditions of the area are expected to be safer for us to fi to finally do that. So that would have been uh, the one they canceled. Let me see. Yeah. The one they did, they canceled due to unforeseen circumstances. In other words, Betty, you came to town. And you approached all these people. And now there's another thing out here to all content. So the, the purpose of YouTube is for things like this. To get the word out when somebody is missing. To give that backstory that the reporters don't often give. To give others who are watching this on a national forefront the backstory that only a local can do. Such as when you're at Washington State University which is Wazoo, you don't say Wazoo when you're reporting. So now, the platform of YouTube as a whole has been cheapened and looks like a joke for what you're doing, Betty. Your selfish needs should not be hurting victims instead of helping them, but that is what's happening. I'm so disappointed that people support you. Sorry, I'm just really taking a moment here to just be disgusted. I don't know what you guys can see of the groups. Um, there are private Facebook groups and so I'm reading from that just to let you know. So the ones involved in the search are Winona County Emergency Management, Winona Police Department, Fillmore County Sheriff's Office, and the Houston County Sheriff's Office. And they really, they go shoulder to shoulder. They, they are not wanting anybody to do anything other than that this isn't a sport betty this is somebody's worst nightmare you act like you're out there doing pokemon go or geocaching and you're going to be the one who's going to find the body well it's it's terrible this isn't a game 
These are people's lives. This was somebody's mother. You going on the areas that law enforcement has had all of us stay away from. You going and doing this has made it harder for those of us who are local, who would go and give our time and be a part of those searches and not do it for recognition, not sit there and film, but to do exactly what I'm supposed to do as to use the platform correctly. And I could say, yeah, I went, we did this, we did that. But being a part of it and actually doing that, not taking anybody's money, but to give my time and then talk about my experience to raise awareness to find her and bring her home. I'm going to stop here because I'm going to have to do this in more than one thing because there is so much more because it just... It, Ugh. I'm just going to have to stop now because I'm going to say something that I don't want to. And I'm just very disappointed that you shut down that search this weekend. You are an unforeseen circumstance. I don't think that I can make it any more clear that you are an unforeseen circumstance. So please just do what you say that you are doing and stay away from these because you go there and you want to try and cover for where you've been. You're no different than a teenager who goes and tells their mom that they're going to go to the movie and you were really going to go and just make out with your boyfriend in the car. I don't know if you had any boyfriends or anything, but then afterwards you just run up to somebody really quick and be like, hey, what was the movie about? Because in case your parents quiz you, that's what you're doing. You told everybody you were going to the movie. Crime scene. But you went and made out with your boyfriend. In other words, Trump rally. So now you ran over to the area, the epicenter of a crime scene. And you ran around and tried to get the inside story so you'd have it. Getting the details of the movie for this example I'm giving. That's really sad. Why don't you just be honest? Why don't you be as honest as you were when you were all giddy because a real reporter interviewed you? What did you say again? I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast, but we're here, and that actually was my adventures here, too. It's because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast, but we're here, and that actually was my adventures here to all these Trump rallies because we've been to a lot of them. I'm from Florida, and uh, I have a true crime podcast. <laughs> so what are you doing with true crime? You're messing it up. Stay away from it, okay? What in the hell are these people celebrating you for and doing all of this and, and this? Do they know that you just lie? Do they know that you just once again stopped people from doing what they had planned doing? Trying to find a missing and presumed dead mother. I'm not going to say anything more about the case. We'll see what you what you come up with. But I'll also be posting to show that you were in Minnesota and this is what was canceled and this is what the result was. And I'm supposed to learn from you because you make all the money and you have all the subs. All right, Betty, let me know how to do better. I'm sure that you'll be acting like you're God now and read off everything I've ever done in my life and compromise the safety of my family and whatnot because that's what you do when somebody speaks the truth about you, but I'd rather no one speak the truth than be silent and continue to let you exploit others and lie.